debate, discuss, and resolve the health care crisis through prayerful and civil discourse. We are called to be healthy in the midst of this debate about health care. In recent months, we have witnessed too much rancor and incivility disrupting the conversations around the health care issues. The American people want and deserve healthy debate and healthy discussions as we as a nation establish a healthier system of care in America. The use of anger, especially based on misleading and untruthful claims, is harmful. It is harmful to the American people. It is unhealthful and it is immoral. We are all aware that our health care system does not reflect the values of people of faith. It takes unfairly from working families as premiums increase and outpace wage growth and squeeze family budgets in a time we have nothing left to squeeze. It excludes 47 million people who lack health insurance. It drives families to financial ruin by burdening them with staggering bills even when they are insured. Here in Ohio, 1.2 million people, 1.2 million people lack health insurance. Insurers can exclude coverage for pre-existing conditions and premiums have increased eight times as fast as wages in recent years. These are all symptoms of a broken and sinful system. We believe the reform of this system is an immediate civic priority of the highest order. We believe the reform of this system should be a priority for the religious community. We believe the need for affordable, quality health care for all people in Ohio and the United States of America is undeniable. Therefore, we believe Ohio calls upon the United States Congress to move forward quickly in a civil manner to establish a health care system which is available for all, is continuous, is affordable to individuals and families, is affordable and sustainable for society, enhances health and well-being by promoting access to high-quality care that's effective, efficient, safe, timely, patient-centered, and equitable. Therefore, there could be no tolerance for falling further behind on this important life serving matter. We believe the time is now to fix this. It is a great joy and an honor to introduce to you Dr. Mark White, who last week when we asked him to speak about this from his faith perspective, from the perspective that he gives himself to this as ministry as well as care in medicine, said, sure, I'm ready. <laughs> so let's see. All right, Dr. White. Good morning, Paul. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And um, I would like to first say that uh, give honor to God and uh, blessings for being here. We're dealing with a very critical and important issue of people's health in America. And we came to this community, my staff and I, who stepped out on faith, and came to a community where health care is most needed. We deal with mind, body, and spirit. And if the mind is not good, or the body's not, any of the three are out of sync, then there's a problem. And when there's a situation where health care, where people can't go and get health care, that there's a problem with the body. And from a spiritual standpoint, if the spiritual and the mind and the body are not connected, then we have a problem. And so we need to, first of all, look at our health care system and see what it's based on. And make sure that the health care system in America is based on spirituality, 
as it relates to the mind, as it relates to the body. And that's what we do here at this Gateway Health and Wellness Center. We try to deal with the body, mind, and spirit. And that's where those three, if you have a disconnect between those three, then you have a problem. And that's the message that we want to send out to America today, that healthcare has to be available for people. It has to be available. We've had patients come in that have not been able to access the healthcare system for months. And they may have diabetes or high blood pressure or heart problems, and they show up on our doorstep and say they haven't been able to get health care because they were they didn't have insurance. And when they come to us, they come broken, their diabetes is out of control, their heart is out of control, their blood pressure is out of control because they didn't have access to health care. We have to fix that as a as a as the United States of America, we have a responsibility. As human beings, we have a responsibility. The Bible says the greatest thing that we can do is help less fortunate, people that are less fortunate than we are. And so that's what we're trying to do here at Gateway Health and Wellness, is to reach out to the community and help those who are less fortunate. Thank you. I'm here today as a pediatrician. I've seen in my practice the importance of children having access to regular checkups, preventative care, and early medical intervention to treat illnesses before they become debilitating or life-threatening. In my husband's work as an emergency medicine physician, he has seen the effects of our broken system from a different angle. There are ever-increasing numbers of patients seeking help in emergency departments because they didn't have access to regular and preventative care. Patients are sicker with advanced diseases and untreated injuries. These injuries could have been suffering, could have been prevented in many cases, um, and now that they seek help at a later stage, it's also, also more expensive for the system to deal with them. I'm here today as a Muslim. The sacredness of life and the responsibility of taking care of all of humanity are central tenets of my faith, Islam. The Quran defines the sacredness of each human life in chapter 5, verse 32, in which it teaches that to take one innocent life is as bad as if one has taken the lives of all of humanity. And to save one life is as good as if one has saved the lives of all of humanity. Every single life in the eyes of God is that sacred. In chapter 17, verse 70, the Quran also teaches that God has honored and dignified the descendants of the first man, Adam. That's all of us, humanity. So we are mandated to treat each person with the utmost respect and care that is the fitting of a creation that God has made sacred and blessed with an inherent honor and dignity. Each person matters. And we cannot stand by and allow people to suffer or be ill when we have ways to ease their suffering and cure their illnesses. To allow this is to allow an injustice that should not be accepted by people of faith. And I am here today as a mother. When I became a parent, a mother, my heart awoke to a greater understanding of what it means to feel mercy for another human being. I experience feelings of mercy for my children so intensely that I can't even describe them. And although I don't have words to describe them, I'm sure that every parent here today knows exactly what I'm talking about. Since I became a mother, when I look into the face of a child that is not my own, I see my own child's eyes reflected in their face, and I feel the echo of that mercy in my heart. As I do not want my own children to suffer, I don't want anyone else's children to suffer either. Working to ensure access to health care for all of our children is a way I live my commitment to my faith, my profession, and the ultimate responsibility of motherhood that God has given us. In conclusion, our system of providing health care in this country is broken. We need to fix it. To remain silent when others are in need or suffering is not an option, especially for people of faith. the dignity of each person, and to take care of our neighbors. As a pediatrician, as a Muslim, and as a mother, I stand here today with my brothers and sisters from the community to call for a humane approach to health care reform. Thank you.